Hello guys, this video will show you how to bake the sleigh split maps in 3ds Max. I think 3ds Max is a pretty good solution because as you're modeling here you can bake it right away and it's nice and simple as well. So let's go ahead and just create a plane. You know, let's do something really basic here. Go ahead and give this a different object color. All right. So let's make this our, this is going to be the space and this is our low poly. So I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to move that off to the right. All right. For this, let's model some basic details here, guys. I'm just going to apply it to poly. Let's model some sort of nice pipe detail here. Some nice sci-fi pipe detail. All right, I'm going to delete this right here. I'm going to delete that right there. All right. And we can actually delete this as well. All right, I'm going to just insert some loops through here as well. All right, guys. So, of course, sometimes you want to have all the detail here, but sometimes you want to work with something simple and have it all appear at render time, which is the benefit of displacement. And unlike normal maps, you don't just get the surface detail, you get it from the side as well. So the first thing to notice, guys, is that, you know, I'm not an expert on this place of my baking, but from what I understand, if you guys have any kind of additional comments or tips, please be sure to leave them in the comments. So we need to have an understanding of how much, what is the lowest value, what is the highest value. But to make it nice and simple, this is now zero on the Z axis. But on this high poly, which we're going to subdivide as well, let's give ourselves, let's say, three iterations. All right. Or maybe let's say four. We have something going up and something going down. So if we just kind of click on that point, this is about negative, let's say negative nine and positive, let's say positive nine. So negative nine and positive nine. So we're going to click on this. We're going to go into rendering and then bake to texture. All right, guys, the first thing to understand is that different renderers have different options. So to make it easy, let's go into our render setup. And regardless of what render you use, you can simply switch this to the default scanline renderer. Or of course, recent version of 3ds Max also come with Arnold, so you can use one of these Arnold maps as well. But we can also use scanline render. So essentially you open up which render you want to use and which map you want to use, click on height and then add maps to selected objects. All right, you can figure out some things here, file type, output to, padding, image size, UV channel. But an important thing right here is projected from. Where are you gonna project this from? So we're gonna click on and pick from a list or pick from scene, and I'm gonna click on the high poly object. All right, next we click right here and here we enter in that minimum height and maximum height value. So we're gonna enter in negative nine and positive nine for the maximum height. Okay, guys, you can also change the path as well. So then click on bake. All right, guys, in order to actually render, you can switch back to your render of choice. So for example, Arnold or V-Ray or anything else. All right, I'm going to move this off to the side and we can just apply it a poly on top. So guys, different rendering setups have different ways to create the displacement. Since I use V-Ray, I'm going to choose V-Ray displacement mod. I'm gonna click on text map right here and choose that bitmap file. All right, we'll scroll down here and pretty much we'll look at things like amount, shift, and then relative to B box and then text map min and text map max. All right, let's do a quick render here and let's see how well it matches our high poly. All right, as you can see, the displaced plane barely matches this. So your first option may be just to greatly increase the power intensity. But what I have found is that you want to scroll down here and activate the relative to B box option. And even with the amount still at one, let's re-render. As you can see, it matches it pretty well right here. In fact, let's move it back to the original state and let's change the object color as well so we can actually difference in colors. All right, guys, as you can see, 
We got two problems here. Number one, this placement is a little bit too high. It looks like it matches the shape quite well, but it's a little bit too high. And we've got these strange dragging lines going across here. So in order to fix the lines, you simply go into your material editor. You drag your displacement map from here into the editor as an instance. And the trick that I find, guys, is that you want to turn the blur down to zero. And for the filtering, you set that to none. Let's re-render. As you can see, once we change those options, we get rid of those long lines. Don't worry about these shapes. This is just a bad lighting setup. But you can see that we no longer have those stretching lines. They're just kind of dragging up here. So the second issue is how do we fix how that it's being too high? Well, we can, for example, do something simple like apply a push modifier and just push it beneath that. As you can see, the push option is a great simple solution just to offset that by having it be pushed down. Now this time, let's turn off push and this time let's use shift. Okay guys, it looks like negative 0.5 was the sweet spot here. So guys, this is how you can bake very nice displacement maps and very easily reuse them. So the benefit of that is that let's say I do this right here. I'm going to go ahead and press S for snaps. Make sure it's set to vertex and hold shift. And let's create, for example, nine of these copies here. And I'm going to I'm going to go underneath of here and I'm just going to attach them all. all right, and I'm going to apply, let's say, a bend modifier. So as you can see, guys, we can take something as simple as this. And this is just, of course, turbo smooth. We can we can have that be zero in the viewport and three at render time. So essentially what we do is when you actually work, you can actually use very simple objects like this for rigging and everything else, you know, just to keep things nice and simple in the viewport without having, you know, let's see, you want to have like millions of bracelets, for example, you don't want to have all the thousands of polygons and millions of polygons that this would produce, but you want to work with something like this, very easy to rig, very easy for collisions, things like that. And at render time, it creates this much more detailed object right here. And of course, guys, we could have spent more time in the high poly phase and just really packed this with lots of details. And so now I have the benefit, guys, of being able to know how to work with really simple objects, how to bake it, and how to reuse it as well. Thank you for watching and take care.